What's up everybody? Welcome to the channel. My name is Austin McCurry and today I'm going to be giving you my thoughts on the Ursa Mini 4.6K and um, if I think it's a good camera in 2021. This camera has 15 stops of dynamic range, so Everything I've ever shot with this camera has looked beautiful, whether it was a wedding or a commercial or something for myself, it's always just looked good. It has ProRes 422 and 444. And when I first started shooting with it, I shot on 422 just because it was what I was used to. The day that I switched to 444 and got the full dynamic range of this camera blew my mind. ProRes 422 and 444 are really good codecs for editing and I've never been uh, editing a project and had like a bog down system where I just couldn't cut. Um, as long as you do your grade after you do your cutting, uh, it literally just runs perfectly smooth. The camera has two XLR ports and when I look for a camera, that is one of the first things I look for. I would like to plug in a boom mic and a lav as a backup and I don't wanna just have one and I don't wanna have a 3.5 millimeter. I want a true XLR port. The camera also has CFast card adapters to shoot on SSDs instead of CFast, which is amazing because I can shoot on one terabyte SSDs. I can shoot on two of them and have two terabytes and never need to worry about memory. The menu systems just make sense. Going through the menus and changing settings and going to presets and literally everything about the menu system and the touchscreen just work. The camera is magnesium alloy, which means it is a very strong camera. Uh, it feels strong. You don't. It doesn't feel cheap. It's not plasticky. It's it's a very solid camera, and it feels like whatever you put it through, it's going to take. The camera also has EF mount, which if you are a photographer or someone who owns Canon glass, that is a huge benefit because I can use all of my Canon glass I've been using in photography for this camera also playback. So the Ursa has a touchscreen that you can just drag across left and right and fast forward and stop the clip wherever you want and play back specific parts of the clip. There's a ton of cameras like the FS7 and A7S and just different cameras that have almost a perfect camera and then they mess up on the playback. So when you're in front of a client and that kind of thing actually matters, it's nice that the Ursa has it. The camera is Netflix certified, which means it checks all of the boxes for Netflix in order to shoot a documentary or shoot a feature film or shoot whatever you need for Netflix. So if you are borderline in that category of your work is good enough to be there, to land on Netflix, then it's nice to know that your camera is certified. This camera has fixed pattern noise, so if you don't have enough light for the camera, there are scenarios where it has it and then sometimes you just don't have it. Um, it's I've shot weddings in super low light and the fixed pattern noise wasn't super noticeable and then I've shot in a car interior and it was noticeable. Um, it is avoidable uh, if you don't push your colors or you don't if you grade a very specific way, sometimes you can kind of make it a little bit more low key, but it's there. The audio monitoring is terrible. Uh, if it's on a tripod and you have headphones on, it's okay. Yeah, as long as you don't touch the tripod or touch the camera at all. But if you're handheld or you are moving in any way, then you're going to hear the vibrations and just the monitoring in general. It doesn't feel very good. I've had iPhone headphones, I've had professional headphones. I've, tr I've tried every different type of headphone and different monitoring and it just doesn't feel good. It feels like the where the port is or something just takes in every little movement of the camera and you hear that instead of the actual audio. Um, it doesn't come across in the audio but it's it's just a wonky way of monitoring audio. There are no physical buttons for iris and shutter speed and the exposure values. So 
when you're using the touch screen to adjust that, it does feel a little jerky. Your iris isn't going to be a smooth roll like you'd get on a dial on the external of a camera. The CFast to SSD conversion piece that you put on the camera doesn't really have a good way of tucking away the CFast card. So when you're done shooting, you basically have to tape the CFast cards to the camera, which just isn't a clean look or it doesn't feel very secure. It feels like those wires could just give any day. Um, I've had it for two years and it's been fine, but I'm taping it to my LCD door. And then you gotta worry about the residue from the tape. There are no internal NDs on this camera. So when you add a matte box and filters and ND, you are essentially adding more gear to your kit. So instead of having one nice Pelican case with all of your gear, you have two Pelican cases because you have a matte box and filters and it just becomes a little overwhelming. The camera is very heavy. So I come from a background where I shot on FS7 for years, FS700, I've shot on different handheld cameras that were lightweight and those cameras are manageable. But this camera, I don't have a shoulder rig for it, but if I did, I imagine even the shoulder rig would be kind of clunky and hard to carry all day. Um, every time that I use it, I use it on an easy rig and I've walked around all of New York with it and filmed. I walked from West Village all the way up to Financial District and back and was okay because I had an easy rig, but I don't think it would be possible if I didn't. ProRes 444 is still massive. So if you're getting the full dynamic range out of this camera, you are also getting a massive file. Um, it's something worth knowing walking into buying this camera because you're gonna have to incorporate that price into your clients and know that backing up even your personal projects is gonna be a little bit harder because of how big the files are. My last but probably my most important con is sometimes the camera just doesn't work. I don't know if this is the CFast to SSD reader or if it's the V-mount battery option that I have, but there have been a few days, two of them in the two years that I've had it, where it just didn't turn on. Um, one of the times I was on a very important shoot for work and I didn't bring my media for my work camera, but I had my Ursa in my car and I was like, this is perfect. I, I can still shoot this project. I went to turn on my Ursa and it didn't turn on. And I plugged in six, seven, eight different V-mount batteries into it and every time it just didn't register. And later hearing from other people, it is said that it's the, the file naming on the SSD or something to do with how I formatted the SSD, but I didn't do it any different than I ever did. So I don't understand why, you know, later it just randomly turned on. Um, so it not being reliable 100% of the time is kind of unfortunate considering there are a lot of cameras for that price range that have turned on for me every try and yeah. So would I buy this camera again? Yes, no. Uh, I picked it up used for two grand and it's been by far the best camera I've ever owned. Um, it's a it's a beautiful camera and even the cameras at my you know salary positions and stuff it it beat it beat the reds it beat the FS7s it, it beats so many cameras I shot with that I don't think I would choose another camera. I've never owned a camera that produces a better image so as far as what I need I cut to audio and voiceovers and music and stuff so it's it's worked for me. So with that being said, cheers y'all.